Ready for part four? Woody fragrances, are you tired of them? Let me know if you're bored of the woody fragrance videos. This is part four, as I said, this is woody spicy fragrances. I did a general woody fragrances video. I also did amber woody fragrances video. In the last week I did woody leather fragrances. So today, woody spicy fragrances. If you're a fan of the style or you're curious to learn about the style, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. It's Sebastian. We're talking about woody fragrances. I know you guys have been asking me to do updates on my woody fragrances videos, and I thought I'd do a whole series of them. This is part four. There's a few more that I have scheduled to do, but if the views don't come, then I'm going to stop doing them because uh, nobody's interested in watching these videos. So there's a few more videos, as I said, but this is part four of woody spicy fragrances. And generally, lots of woods could be cedar, sandalwood, guyac, uh, I guess sequoia, but you know, all these kind of woods are not typical. Maybe some cypress can come in, but it's more aromatic woody. And then of course, spices could be fresh spices like pepper, pink pepper, it could be cardamom, ginger, or warm spices like nutmeg, maybe, you know, cloves and cinnamon and things like that. But most of these don't, don't go into the warm direction. They're all very fresh, spicy, woody fragrances. But let's go ahead and get started with Nishane's Credo or Credo, this one right here. So first off, this does remind me a little bit of Tom Ford's Oud Wood, very popular style. And I feel like it's the Oud and the Woods combo with cardamom that kind of gives you that experience. Lots of Oud here, lots of sandalwood as well, and then also cardamom to the max. Cardamom really works wonderfully against woods. I think it's a great, great note uh, for woody fragrances because it just freshens things up. Cardamom generally has a bit of a soapiness, this kind of clean spicy smell, very pungent, very aromatic and very spicy. And against woods it's perfect. So in here it's working perfectly but you've also got that fresh spice of the pink pepper. Osmanthus giving you light, very light fruitiness and then there's additional sandalwood here and then a bit of leathery touch from suede. So it's a little different than oud wood which is a very popular style. It's also a bit more potent, uh, a more robust take on it if you're kind of tired or bored of oud wood but you really like that DNA, you're looking for something that's a little different. I highly recommend you try Credo or Credo from the house of Nishane. It's created by Jean-Louis Suizac, who's a great perfumer over at IFF. Next, going to the house of Atelier Materi, it's Santal Blonde. So I had this weird coincidence happening here. I believe this is created by the, the son of the perfumer for the previous fragrance I spoke to you guys about, Credo. It's just somehow ended up here. But Atelier Materi Santal Blonde is a blonde sandalwood come to life. It's really beautiful, gorgeous, intense sandalwood, creamy, a little granular as well, a little dusty, grainy kind of against the creaminess, the soft, uh, you know, kind of smooth uh, creaminess of sandalwood. In addition to those notes, we've got Hinoki Wood, Tonka, Bergamot for some freshness. And then of course, Cardamom comes in here as well, giving you that very intense, fresh spice. This, you know, very, very, like there's a very kind of soapy quality, almost like a cleaning solution, but in a spicy way. Not necessarily like you would open up a cleaning solution and smell that, but there's something clean and soapy about Cardamom. And the more I experience it, the more it reminds me of it, especially noticeable if you ever drink Middle Eastern coffee with cardamom inside it, you'll notice that kind of slight soapiness against the, the unique earthiness of the coffee. Here, it's there, very, very prominent. But in the end, it's extremely woody and extremely spicy. And they've captured all kinds of great woods in here, combine it with that overdose of uh, cardamom and with some freshness as well. Very unique fragrance. And I believe this is... Um, yeah, I believe this is the son of Jean-Louis Suizac, and I'm drawing a blank with his first name, but it, uh, his last name is obviously the same thing. But moving on to the house of Ex Nihilo, it's The Hedonist, this one right here. The Hedonist is a great, great woody, spicy fragrance, also a bit reminder of something like Tigar from the house of uh, Bulgari. Bulgar Bulgari's Tigar is really, really popular. I have a whole video on alternatives on the channel if you're curious to find out about it. 
This has that hint, but it's an overdose of woods and spices with some zing thrown in as well. It's got an overdose of akigala wood. It's a kind of a cleaned up patchouli note. And akigala wood or patchouli is a woody note. It has a wood, woody characteristics, but uh, super sexy. I really love that kind of uh, note in here. But there's also vetiver here, tonka, ginger, musks, and of course, bergamot. And that's the combination that's giving us this kind of reminder of uh, fragrance smelling like Tigar. If you're, again, once again, we're talking about if you're kind of bored of Tigar, you want a little change of pace, try this one. I think uh, it'll satisfy. This is the Hedonist from the House of Ex Nihilo. Then we're moving on to the House of Juice Box. It's 14 Hour Dream. This one right here, are you familiar with this one? This was kind of a late discovery for me from this house and it's a really gorgeous fragrance. We're focusing on patchouli here. Patchouli is a woody note. It's a leaf. It's from the mint family, but it's a woody experience. It's usually, you know, used in the base notes of a fragrance because it's some of the most dense notes, also very long lasting. And this is a really, really long lasting fragrance and very, very super sexy. It's patchouli leaves, vanilla flowers, iris butter, sandalwood, gayak, cedar, black pepper and saffron, slight leathery touches, overdose of spices, but this beautiful combination of vanilla and patchouli together. It's a match made in heaven. It's super sexy. If you haven't tried 14 Hour Dream, please do. And Juice Box is a brand that's um, all inspired by music. So if you're into music and perfumes, check out that brand for some great inspirations of fragrances from either musicians or bands or styles of music and things like that. But moving on to the house of Electimus London, it's Cupid's Kiss. Now this was recently featured in Scent Club Mystery Box number three. It's a very unique fragrance in that it has these kind of incensey, smoky touches, but it's being created by pink pepper. The pink pepper or pepper note in general, or you know, black pepper note, definitely has touches of incense in it. And sometimes it tricks my nose because pink pepper, black pepper starts smelling like incense and vice versa. Incense starts smelling like pink pepper or black pepper. So there's a very interesting church-like thing happening here and there's no mention of, uh, you know, the note of incense, but it's lots of pink pepper, sandalwood, orris, suede, oud immortel, labanum, bergamot. Very, very unique creation for the perfumer Julian Raskinet. I like the whole minerally touches. It also kind of, to me, reminds me of something like uh, Quinton Biche's creation for Marc Antoine Barrois Ganymede. It doesn't smell like it, but it wears like it. Does that make sense? I just feel like the inspiration is there. And the, given the fact that there's an Immortel here, the Immortel is also present in Ganymede. Again, they don't smell alike, but they wear very similarly. It's a really great fragrance. I can't believe how good it is. This is Electimus London's Cupid's Kiss. Let me know if you're a fan of that one. And next up, it's from the house of Noem. It's Kalahari Extreme, another fragrance that was recently featured in Scent Club Mystery Box 3. And if you recall the videos I did for the Mystery Box 3, this is one of the fragrances that the way we received it were decanted by the brand. They were not official made samples. So the box smelled so super sexy. And every time I'd lean or get close to the box, this aroma just develops and smells great. It wears great on skin as well. It's Virginia cedar, frankincense, labanum, cardamom, myrrh, nutmeg, pink pepper, aniseed, orange, and pear. Slight light fruitiness, but the combo is so good. It's so super sexy, but very woody, very spicy, eventually developing into some ambery touches when it's drying down. But along the way, you've got the anise seed giving you that kind of spicy green booziness, some freshness from sweet orange, and then, of course, light fruitiness from pear. It's a great scent. And I know that you guys really like this one because uh, I received multiple you know, messages and comments that that was one of your favorites. But moving on to Marc Antoine Barrois, this is B683 Extra. This is super potent beast mode and animalic, and I absolutely love the way this one smells. It's really, really great. I enjoy it more than the original. Ganymede is my favorite from this house, but this one to me is also really, really, this might be my number two. In fact, I believe it is. So it's Oud, Saffroline, Violet Leaf Absolute, Green Apple, Sandalwood, Patchouli, Pink Pepper, Cumin, and Vanilla. It's definitely got animalic qualities here. Really super potent animalic qualities. Beast mode is the right word to use. And the original was already potent and they've intensified it here. 
to the max so a little goes a long way be warned though it's a bit sweaty from the cumin and also has some funk in there so i think they did a great job with this so it's b683 x-ray from the house of marc antoine barois then moving on to the house of jacques fat it's velu boise velu boise here this is definitely lighter than what I just spoke about because that one was X-ray to Parfum and it's super beast mode. Here we've got a very classy, elegant, woody, spicy fragrance with lots of woodsy notes. There's lots of woods here. They're not really claiming or letting us know what kind of woods. It just says woods, could be cedar, could be some sandalwood, maybe some guyac wood in here. Lots of spices. And again, I feel like they're not mentioning the spices. I think it's just a kind of a cornucopia of like some fresh spices and warm spices. I feel like there's a lot of warmth in here. So it could be some cinnamon, could be some nutmeg, but also something like ginger and cardamom. Oh, it's just a gorgeous combination. Along the way, you have whiskey, immortel, patchouli, guyac wood, and mate. It's a great fragrance. Uh, it's uh, just a really like gorgeously made boozy, woody, spicy fragrance. The booziness is quite prominent. And from the Immortel note in here, also there's some sweet caramelish undertones there as well. So really beautifully made fragrance here, Jacques Fat's Velour Boise. Let me know if you're a fan of that one. Moving on to the house of Francesca Bianchi. This is a really great fragrance. One of my very first favorite fragrances from this house, Francesca Bianchi's The Dark Side. In the end, it does have the Francesca Bianchi DNA. You'll notice it. When you learn the DNA, you'll notice from one fragrance to the other, they'll start reminding you of one another because I believe Francesca Bianchi uses a DNA in the base that goes from one to the other. It's typically the auris, the leather, the castorium. So those are kind of prominent and common in, in the fragrances of Francesca Bianchi. But this one has honey, amber, incense, iris, spices, patchouli, lots of sandalwood and violet. And it's great wear. A little goes a long way here. It's not overly animalic like some of the fragrances of Francesca Bianchi can get, but a really great dark, woody, spicy, and ambery, powdery fragrance. If you haven't tried this one, try it. Definitely a great fragrance. You can totally start recognizing her the fragrance DNA and you'll start, you know, thinking, okay, this, this is made by Francesca Bianchi and that one is also kind of a thing. So start smelling them and see if you can start, uh, you know, figuring out the, the DNA of Francesca Bianchi. All right, up next, we've got a fragrance from the house of Widian. It's Bunnias, this one right here. Are you familiar with Bunnias? Let me know. This is one of the most gorgeous bottles for me. The red color is so, so beautiful. It kind of reminds me of the red of Baccarat Rouge 540 X-Ray, but super sexy red color here. And this is a woody, spicy fragrance. It's got loads of lavender, so a lot of aromatic touches. It's a bit on the fougere side a little bit, but there's oud, geranium, patchouli, evernil, sandalwood, vetiver, artemisia, cedarwood, mergabot. When you read the, when I'm reading you those notes, kind of giving you the idea. So evernil is kind of like a oak mossy note, lavender, geranium, typically found in fougeres. Patchouli also comes in, vetiver. So in the end, it's got lots of aromatics, spices, and ouds and woods together with the little freshness of the bergamot. It's a great wear, classy, masculine, on leading on the masculine side, and a great fragrance created by uh, Jordi Fernandez for Witty. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with this one. Let me know. Go check out my full review of that one. I do have a full review video for that fragrance. Next up, it's Spiritum with Shamanism. This one right here. This is a fairly newish house. Uh, should be making its way, debuting here in the States soon. It's been out in France for a couple of years, three years, two years. And they actually have a store in Paris as well. And this to me is my favorite from this house. It's on the woody, spicy side, a bit ambery and also musky as well. And has a very powdery experience and it wears super sexy and I really love it. And you just pile it on and smell this really great cloud of woods, spices and you know, powdery notes and musky notes. So it's sandalwood, musk, cinnamon, cypress, cedar, moss, tonka, vanilla, orris, myrrh, vetiver, amber, bergamot, rose, lily of the valley, ilang ilang, cumin. The cumin is very faint in here. It's a nice, nice note to have in here to give it some depth and to give it that kind of spicy depth. But in the end, it's kind of molecular in a way made with not necessarily molecular notes, if that makes sense. Very musky and powdery, but overdose of uh, woods and spices here. So it's shamanism from the house of Spiritum. Let me know if you're familiar with that one. Next, going to the house of Rosendo Matu. That's number seven, this one right here. 
So this is definitely a very woody, spicy fragrance. We've got Thai Oud in this one and also Laotian Oud. So it's an Oud overdose with vanilla, patchouli, benzoin, jasmine, spices, and rose. So if you don't know, sometimes fragrance notes don't feature very prominent notes of spices, but some of the notes do act spicy on their own. A lot of Ouds do, patchouli does. So even though the, the spices are not mentioned like prominently, a lot of these notes can make the fragrance come off spicy. But it's a very nicely made vanilla patchouli oud combo. So it's super woody, oudy, and then of course sweetened up with the vanilla and then intensified and made earthy with the, the patchouli that's in here. But you know, they've thrown in some spices. There's some warm spices in here. I feel like it's more warm than, well, no, I think there's some freshness in here as well with some light touches of flowers or floral notes. Really gorgeous fragrance. Still not my favorite from the house. It's probably my second favorite. Number five is definitely my favorite. But number seven is really, really great from the house of Rosendo Matu. And last but not least, we're going to end the list with a favorite fragrance of mine as of late. It's Al Jazeera's Patchouli. I've been wearing quite a bit of this one and I just can't get enough. This is one of the best fragrances I put my nose on from the last couple of years. And I love the combination of the patchouli and honey in here. It's super amazing. First off, it reminds me of Vintage Angel from Mugler and also a little bit of combination of Guerlain's Linstant the Guerlain Pour Homme Eau Extreme in the brown rimmed bottle. If you like those two fragrances, you gotta get your nose on this. It's super amazing. It's a bit complicated to get, unfortunately, but I'm hoping the brand starts distributing in the States here very soon. But as I said, patchouli, honey, a little cumin, nutmeg, pralines, sandalwood, musk, and vanilla. Amazing. If you're a fan of patchouli, you gotta get your nose on this one. It is one of the best patchouli fragrances I've put my nose on recently. I can't believe how good it is. It's around 130 euros for a 75 ml. I think it's a 75 ml. And it's a really, really great fragrance. I really love it. Long lasting on the dry side. It does remind me a bit of autumn. And I can see from the, the, the design of this uh, bottle, it's a bit autumn-like. But either way, really wonderful, woody, spicy fragrance. It's Al Jazeera's Patchouli. And that is the last fragrance I'm talking about today. Let me know your thoughts on these fragrances. Do you enjoy them? Do you like woody spicy fragrances? Let me know. If you have a favorite woody spicy fragrance I didn't speak about, put a comment down below so I can find out. And also, if you haven't caught the last three videos, please go catch them. Uh, I think uh, you'll discover some really great woody fragrances. And if you're tired of the woody series, let me know. If you want to see more, also let me know. I'll, I'll take inventory and do uh, the next uh, two more I think I have uh, targeted or like thought about putting together. And if not, we'll stop it here. But either way, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. So I do have a couple of bonus options for you guys. These definitely are woody spicy, a bit going towards the amber direction as well. So these could have ended up in the woody amber fragrances category or video but i want to highlight them here so you guys know first off it's bentley for men intense from the house of bentley very inexpensive fragrance really great it's incense leather benzoin rum black pepper patchouli woodsy notes cedar bay leaf and cinnamon lots of warm spices here lots of warm notes here boozy notes as well as smoky notes and then of course all the woods really wonderful i love the dry down on that one Really, really great and inexpensive. For 100 ml, you can get it for like 35, 40 bucks. And then this next one is Victory Knox's uh, Black Steel right here. This is also really quite great. A little, not as boozy, but there's d definitely ambery touches here and some smoky touches as well. They're kind of sort of similar, but not quite. This is Smoky Pine, Swiss Larch Accord, Leather, Black Pepper, Almond Accord. It's really, really great fragrance for the price. If you're budget minded and you don't like to spend a lot of money, I highly recommend you try this. Both of these fragrances are going to satisfy. And even though we're headed to summer, I think both of these will be perfect for, you know, cooler days in the summertime and also perfect Perfect fragrances for autumn and winter. So, Bentley for Men Intense and then also Victory Nuts Black Steel. Check those out as great woody, spicy budget options. Thank you. Bye.